Guess what, guys? What? I pulled Corrine out of retirement. Woohoo! She's come back to make another video with dun, us. Dun, dun. Yeah, yeah, we missed her so very much, right? Oh, I missed you too. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so I brought her back because we never actually made a video about the spinal cord because I don't know why. I don't know why. Honestly, I have no idea why. No, just never got that far. <laughs> so we are looking currently at the spinal cord. Um, and right now the dorsal part of the, the spinal cord is yeah, on this side and then the ventral or anterior side is going to be closer to the bottom of your screen. All right, so we are gonna run through these parts and we are gonna start with the sulcus and the fissure. So the first is the posterior median sulcus. Ray, now remember we also use dorsal in place of the uh, posterior term. So either one of those could show up and either one of them would be valid as an answer on a lab exam, for yes. example. Uh, now, the other one is on the anterior side. So this is the anterior median fissure. The anterior median fissure. Now, the central canal is going to run right down the center, and this will be filled with cerebrospinal fluid that's coming down from the ventricles of the brain. Now, let's look at the gray matter. Now, if you notice, we have a beautiful butterfly. A beautiful gray butterfly. Isn't it pretty? It's beautiful. Um, it is gray matter. So remember, this is unmyelinated pieces of the nervous system, most neurons and unmyelinated matter. Um, so this is going to get broken up into three pieces. So again, we used anterior, posterior, and then lateral. So the anterior gray horns, the posterior gray horns, and then the lateral gray horns. So again, associated to once you figure out front and back, you're good. Also remember that dorsal and ventral can be used occasionally when you look at things in other textbooks. Now, let's look at the white matter, which white. surrounds the butterfly. All around. And now, so this is gonna be myelinated matter, which means some faster speed to send signals up and down. So we have, again, anterior, posterior, and lateral. So anterior white column, the posterior white column, and <gasps> lateral. lateral Yay. white column. Yes, yeah, so these, maybe this is why we never filmed it. It's really very, very Because exciting. it was like, okay, anterior, posterior, yeah, we got front, it. Front, back, side, front, right, back, side, front, front back, back, side. Front, back, side. So then the other thing that you can see coming off of this spinal cord is actually going to be part of our peripheral nervous system are the spinal nerves. So the roots of the spinal nerves are coming off and then heading out of the spinal column to the rest of the body with information and then collecting information. So the spinal nerves you can see um, on both the left and the right side and then the roots that are going to be sending or receiving information from those nerves. So the first you can see is the dorsal root. This is sensory information that's going to be coming in from the rest of the body to- Approaching. Approaching mm -hmm. our spinal cord. Afferent. <laughs> and then the dorsal root ganglion, which is going to be the- big Gang. Old. As it's a gang of cells. Yo, yo, ganglion. Yo, yo, ganglion. <laughs> Kareen always tells me this is the gang. Hey, the yo, gang of cells. So yo. synapses, cell bodies, dendrites. This is going to be where the communication kind of shifts from the peripheral nervous system into the central nervous system. It's funny. You're uh, all it's laughing. right. And you'll remember. Yes. Uh, and then on the other side, the anterior, um, the ventral root is going to be motor signals that are being sent from the spinal cord out to the peripheral nervous system to change things. Right. That's our efferent exiting information. Exiting, entering, exiting, entering, right? Right. Or approaching, exiting. However you want to think about this. I think we got it. I think so too. Yay.